Hello, everyone, and welcome uh, back to this online uh, session. It's uh, actually second uh, session uh, within this uh, uh, online uh, webinar series highlighting the applications of uh, Bison for uh, machine learning for um, uh, reservoir and petroleum engineering. Uh, so um, this uh, will be uh, presented by me, Shamukhtar uh, Ali, senior reservoir engineer, and my colleague, Mohamed Sissi. Uh, so this um, uh, session is designed to cover a practical uh, uh, applications, two practical applications of uh, of uh, uh, unsupervised uh, learning. This is the first project we will highlight in this session um, for um, clustering and analysis of uh, uh, core analysis uh, or routine core analysis uh, data, uh, mostly uh, proxy permeability, grain density, and so on. Second project uh, for the uh, supervised uh, learning uh, applications for predict uh, prediction of the uh, bomb intake uh, pressure. So um, uh, starting uh, directly, this is the agenda of this um, uh, this webinar, uh, highlighting the uh, major or the common types of machine learning. Uh, the uh, we have two projects as uh, mentioned. Uh, so as um, let's. Um, 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 let's back to this um, slide uh, highlighted before. Uh, so we have um, common types of uh, of machine learning. Uh, the uh, supervised uh, learning is uh, basically dependent of the labeled data. It means uh, we simply have two sets of of data for um, the uh, uh, working data set uh, will be uh, subdivided into. Um, uh, training data for to train your uh, uh, network or neural network and valid cross validation or blind testing and another uh, uh, the um, vector of data as an uh, the output so we are uh, uh, expecting a particular output of this network so um, uh, we have to evaluate the uh, prediction capability of this uh, network uh, based compared to the uh, output or the uh, the recorded uh, 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 data. On the other hand, the unsupervised uh, learning it's um, based on the unlabeled uh, data, which means uh, we have set of algorithms. Uh, uh, try to discover the uh, inherent uh, patterns in, in the uh, data, uh, for example, the uh, data uh, clustering or dimensionality reduction techniques and so on. Uh, a third technique, which is reinforced learning, this is based on feed, uh, feedback and reward uh, uh, algorithms. So before starting with our, um, our projects, as mentioned before, all uh, Bison uh, applications uh, must start with the uh, Anaconda Navigator. So uh, Anaconda Navigator is the uh, standard uh, platform for uh, the management of the uh, Bison environment and uh, the IDEs or the Integrated Development Environment. So we have in uh, Anaconda, we have set of IDEs or uh, the Integrated uh, Development Environment. Um, for example, we have sort of uh, Bison specific uh, IDE like uh, by charm and also the um, uh, spider, and we have uh, general um, general IDEs like uh, like uh, Jupyter Note Notebook, like uh, Visual Studio Code, and so on. Um, the um, mechanism of IDE is they are uh, dedicated platforms to uh, code to test and run and also debug the Bison uh, code. And also in, uh, in Anaconda, we have the uh, environment to have uh, the control of the uh, developed or the installed or the defined uh, libraries. As you can see, you can uh, search for a particular uh, library like, uh, like uh, Bandas, for example. Uh, you can find the uh, details of this library and here you can find the uh, all of the uh, installed uh, libraries in this um, uh, so the uh, anaconda navigator uh, for our example we have um, uh, we will apply we will use the um, visual studio uh, code and uh, we have a set of of uh, 
uh, libraries will be applied. So I will uh, highlight the applications of these libraries uh, right now. So uh, in this example, uh, we have, uh, as you can see, we have um, core, uh, routine core analysis data like this uh, huge uh, data set. Um, the standard core, uh, routine core analysis data, as you can see, we have um, the, um, um, the sample number depths, uh, the um, uh, routine data like uh, porosity, uh, permeability in uh, horizontal and vertical direction, KH in milli Darcy KV, uh, velocity, grain density, and other operation, uh, uh, parameters like um, the grain density and so on. So by displaying the uh, or plotting the uh, standard uh, 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 visualization for uh, routine core analysis uh, data, it's uh, this uh, semi-log plot, uh, permeability on y-axis on the logarithmic scale against the velocity on x-axis, so our objective is to um, cluster the uh, this huge uh, data set, this one, this is before uh, clustering, and identify the optimum number of uh, clusters or identify the corresponding uh, hydraulic flow units or hydraulic um, uh, zonation for your uh, reservoir. Before this, you have to uh, understand your uh, data by applying descriptive uh, statistics uh, for your uh, data. This is the objective of this, um, of this, um, uh, of the first project. So this is the uh, CSV file we have. Uh, we have uh, permeability, uh, velocity, density, uh, phi, RQI, phi Z, and FZI. This is the uh, data set. We have uh, this uh, uh, CSV file, as you can see, data, um, up to uh, 3,400 uh, rows. This is the uh, data set we will apply in this uh, in this project. Uh, now, um, to uh, before starting with the our uh, code, let's uh, highlight. Uh, uh, we have in the first step of this code, as you can see. Uh, first step for any uh, or almost uh, all Bison. Um, uh, coding is, uh, is to import the uh, the corresponding libraries. So in this code, we will uh, we will use uh, Streamlit. Uh, this is the for generating interactive uh, web apps. We will uh, the final result uh, of this uh, of this code is uh, like this. I will show you how to generate uh, uh, this web app using uh, Streamlit and other libraries. So, so this um, uh, we have some code lines and so on. So the first library is extremely to generate interactive uh, web apps for your uh, uh, machine learning and data analytics. Uh, second uh, import uh, this is uh, Bandas as BD. This is the uh, library uh, for data analysis and um, uh, manipulations. Uh, Matplotlib, this is the, another library for uh, visualization and plotting in uh, Bison. Second, um, uh, the next library is Skippy. This is a library for uh, the, um, um, the data analysis and statistical analysis and also curve fitting. Because in this uh, project, we, uh, if we have some, uh, let's say, a cluster like this, we need to generate a curve uh, fit like this uh, example. So um, to generate a curve fit uh, like this um, uh, exercise, uh, we will uh, we have to uh, define or have to import a Skibi, uh, library and Skibi optimize. This is for curve fitting. Uh, next library is uh, C uh, C1. This is library for uh, advanced blotting and also for statistical uh, blotting as well. Um, the one of the commonly used libraries for all Python and machine learning application uh, is the uh, NumPy or the uh, numerical uh, NumPy is the stands for numerical Python. So NumPy provides a uh, multi uh, uh, provides uh, numerical uh, compu uh, computations and also uh, provides multi-dimensional arrays and also metrics processing um, 
uh, for uh, machine learning uh, applications. Uh, last library um, will be applied in this uh, project is uh, Scikit-learn. Scikit-learn, this is a uh, library for uh, machine and deep learning. Uh, Scikit-learn is defined as sklearn. So this is uh, this library provides um, uh, tools for uh, data uh, pre-processing, data cross-validation, and also uh, algorithm visualization. And this particular uh, project, we will uh, use this um, scikit-learn module uh, sklearn.cluster. This to cluster our data, we will uh, apply this um, uh, k-means clustering uh, algorithm. So back to uh, slide to highlight um, what is the uh, key means uh, clustering algorithm. So this is the uh, list of libraries are blind in this uh, project. Uh, as mentioned, Streamlit is for uh, generating interactive web apps and the uh, scikit-learn for uh, machine and deep learning and for generating the uh, using the um, uh, key means clustering uh, algorithm. Now let's define what is a uh, key means uh, clustering. Um, so by definition, it's an uh, unsupervised machine learning technique to uh, uh, identify the um, the uh, inherent uh, uh, patterns in inside your data uh, set or data frame. Uh, this is simply by de uh, defining a set of uh, centroids. This is a random uh, uh, number um, to initialize this algorithm. So let's say we have a set of uh, data right here. So centroid representing the center of each uh, cluster. So this uh, first uh, in first iteration, this center or centroid uh, will be uh, selected randomly. Uh, next step is to apply um, the expectation to assign the uh, data points to the nearest uh, centroid. And next step is maximization to compute the uh, new centroids in uh, relative to the, um, the uh, assigned data points and calculate the mean value for each uh, centroid. So we have different iterations, as you can see, iteration one, it, uh, and in each iteration, we will change the location of this centroid point to have the um, the um, the optimum uh, number of uh, clusters and optimum location of the assigned uh, points. So in this uh, case, uh, sklearn or scikit-learn clustering module will be used, and the quality of the uh, cluster assignment is uh, is dependent of or evaluated by calculating the. Uh, SSE or uh, the square submission of the squared error after the uh, centroids uh, convergence. So uh, this is the data set as mentioned, we will generate using this code uh, and um, a similar plot like this, we will display uh, histograms for all inputs using a streamlit web app and uh, we will uh, highlight our uh, uh, clusters. So back, so back to this uh, uh, this uh, code. So after the um, the uh, definition of or the importing of libraries, as you can see. So the uh, first uh, the ne next lines, as you can see, we have um, uh, two uh, streamlit uh, function to tie to uh, identify the title of this web app. As you can see, st dot title. This is. Uh, streamlit uh, function to uh, add this label in the front of this uh, web app uh, like this. Welcome to Python for Machine Learning for uh, Reservoir Engineering. Next is uh, we will write this uh, label. Uh, this event is organized by B and so on. Uh, next title to import uh, the uh, data from this file. So we have a CSV file. This is the comma separated file format. You can uh, keep the Excel extension or Excel formatting as you want. So uh, next step, next lines in this code is to generate a streamlit uh, title for importing our RCAL data like this line. Next, 
we will generate an streamlet uh, wedge or streamlet uh, um, uh, to uh, import um, uh, the uh, the file. So uh, uploaded file, it's uh, uh, st.file um, underscore uploader. This is an streamlet function to create an wedge in the uh, web app or web uh, page to select uh, the uh, CSV file. This is an uh, label or text um, uh, in closed by uh, two commas um, and um, uh, double quotes, as you can see. And the type of this file is CSV file. So uh, this file can be, uh, for, ex uh, uh, for example, can be Excel file, can be text file and so on. Uh, next step uh, in this code is to check the um, the uploaded file. So we have this if statement to check the uh, file is uploaded. Once the file is uploaded uh, and as a CSV format, so uh, we will use the uh, Bandas uh, library to create or to define this uh, data frame. So uh, Bandas data frame is um, so uh, we have this um, uh, line. So this line, uh, line number 18 of this uh, code, uh, we defined a data frame, df equal uh, bd dot uh, read underscore csv. So this, um, this function is a bandas uh, function to uh, create or to uh, read uh, the uh, uploaded file uh, as csv file. And also, Bandas will convert this CSV file into a data frame uh, for the next data analysis and data uh, manipulations. Once the uh, data um, data file uh, is uploaded, so you can display this file using this uh, streamlet uh, function st dot write the uh, data the uploaded uh, data frame. So. Uh, back to this um, web app, uh, so we have first uh, header, um, the uh, uh, title, and we have this line, uh, importing RCAL data, as you can see. Next, uh, this, is the, uh, this is the uploading wedge uh, defined by Streamlit. So uh, simply, um, I will close this one and uh, back to uh, the code. And if I click here to run this Bison file, we have an important uh, step to run an uh, Streamlit um, web app, as you can see. So, and uh, this is the in the uh, in the uh, C and VS uh, VS code, uh, as you can see. Once you click run. Uh, so we have in the terminal, we have this um, uh, warning message. Uh, we have to uh, use a, com an, a, command, a command line like this. So you have to write right here, streamlet uh, run. And then this code, uh, this com uh, command line must be added right here to run this uh, code on streamlet web app. Because uh, let's say we have this. Uh, this web um, web uh, browser, we will open this uh, code in the web browser. So you have to uh, uh, type right here, streamlet run, and followed by the file name and file extension dot by. This is the, this line must be added right here, click enter. So once you click enter this, um, we have uh, this, um, uh, web app, as you can see, um, to highlight the uh, what we have here, we have this uh, first lines and we have this uh, wedge uh, to select the uh, CSV file. Now click uh, select the file. This is the file already open uh, core underscore data. I select this file. This is the, uh, as you can see, comma separated file. Uh, comma separated value uh, file CSV, double click. So once you open this file, uh, so the uh, streamlet will display this file as this table we have uh, the mobility in, in the first column. 
or column index number zero, column index number one, number two, and so on. Uh, we have k phi density in gram per cc, uh, phi RQI, and so on. This is the uh, data file, um, the um, data frame uh, we have. Uh, next, we have um, the uh, descriptive statistics for this uh, data for uh, Barosti descriptive statistics mean uh, we have the uh, this data count minimum maximum value standard deviation uh, percentiles at 25 uh, 50 and 75%. So uh, back to our code right here. So once they uh, to create this statistical uh, analysis, so um, you will uh, use uh, this streamlet function to uh, write this uh, this label statistical uh, analysis and select the uh, x and y uh, columns. So uh, for x column, it's um, the uh, bandas data frame. This is I lock. This is a uh, bandas function to select all rows in the uh, column index number one. What is the column index number one? Uh, by definition, in Bandas data frame, uh, the column index starting from zero, which means uh, K in the vulnerability in first column, this is column index number zero, and which is the, this is Y column or Y axis, and in X column, this is index number one, which is the second uh, column in this, uh, in this data frame or this data File. So we have uh, vulnerability in Y axis against velocity on X axis. So next uh, uh, line right here is to write the summary of statistical analysis for velocity and use this streamlet um, uh, write function to display the um, this function X column dot describe. Describe, this is a basic function to uh, display the uh, descriptive statistics for your uh, data as mentioned uh, before. Uh, next step in, in this line, after the uh, statistical uh, analysis of the uh, data, we need to generate this plot, k phi uh, cross plot like this, uh, the mobility on y axis against velocity in x axis, and keep in mind the mobility in uh, in log scale or logarithmic scale, as you can see. And also, we will generate this. Uh, we will generate this uh, regression line or fitting line as power law function. This is as in this calculations. So, uh, how to uh, generate this? This is uh, using uh, this um, uh, line of of code to define a bar law uh, function. So uh, in this case, you have to recall the uh, define uh, function, define the um, bar law of, uh, of uh, these parameters, y uh, equal a multiplied by x to the power b, which this is a bar function like this. y, as you can see in this, uh, in this function right here, let's... Uh, and this function, it's y equal a. This is the um, uh, the um, the uh, coefficient. Uh, x, this is the, the independent parameter. And uh, b, this is the bar to the power b. This is the uh, exponent. So this is the form of the bar law function. So uh, define bar law in terms of x, a, and b. This is return the, we will use the, uh, bar law function defined by numby uh, library. Next is um, is to fit this uh, bar law model uh, using the curve fit uh, uh, function or curve fit module from Skibi library. Um, this um, curve fit is function of uh, its type of this curve fit is bar law. Uh, we have data of um, uh, X in, in velocity, Y column is the vulnerability uh, data, and we have the optimization of the two parameters, the coefficient and exponent. This is the uh, SKB optimized uh, module. Uh, next step to display R squared in uh, like this, uh, 
so we have uh, this lines of of uh, coding. Uh, R square by definition it's the uh, residual, which means the uh, difference between the uh, actual data and the um, the uh, fitting uh, the uh, fitting line defined by uh, this equation. Next, calculate the summation of the uh, squared using this uh, equation and the total of the summation of the uh, uh, squared error and R square will be calculated by this uh, uh, this uh, line. Uh, next step is to display this um, R squared and fitting line using this um, uh, coding line from uh, 46 to 49. So uh, this is the streamlit uh, function to write this Paolo regression line like this. Yeah, yes, this line Paolo regression line next to display the um, uh, the uh, uh, coefficient a, the exponent b, and r squared. This is the uh, streamlit using this streamlit uh, functions. Uh, next, we, we we need to display this uh, this uh, K phi cross plot. This is uh, simply using the uh, uh, first add subheader uh, K phi cross plot like this uh, this subheader. Uh, as you can see, K phi uh, cross plot. This is the streamlit function, and followed by two lines um, uh, calling the uh, matplotlib library blt dot figure. This is this function to create a uh, figure uh, of size 10 uh, inch in width and 10 inch in uh, 10 by 10. This is the size of this uh, of this figure. Next is to create scatter plot or uh, between x column, y column, and display data. This is the scatter plot uh, we have in this uh, uh, in this uh, uh, code. And uh, next we will generate the regression line in the red color, as you can see, or fitting line for all data before clustering. So uh, X uh, fit, this is to create, as you can see, num by array of 100 uh, data between the uh, minimum maximum value and use power law fit uh, or to generate this regression line. Line color is red, as you can see. And uh, this is the uh, label in this line um, enclosed by two uh, 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 single quote, as you can see. Next step uh, to display this uh, data, uh, we will uh, call the um, uh, MatplotLab uh, BLT module uh, to control or to customize the uh, axis and uh, labels for this uh, plot. Or this scatter plot. In this plot, as you can see, y-axis is a logarithmic uh, scale. So uh, in x uh, label, uh, this is the uh, defined from data frame column number one, which means this this is column zero, and column one this is the velocity. So the, this is the uh, x label. Uh, y label is this is the column zero as um, bare data bandas data frame uh, indexing and um, consider um, y scale as log scale or logarithmic scale and the uh, the display grading uh, lines in both directions as you can see in x and y direction next step is to create display the bar law equation equation as you can see using this line and use streamlit uh, function uh, st dot by plot to display mad plot lab figure in the streamlit web app this is the end of this plot now we need to apply uh, k means clustering algorithm to cluster the uh, data as you can see into five uh, clusters so um this um in this uh, first step is to uh, display this line in the uh, web app k means clustering followed by the uh, we have this um, this function this uh, scikit learn uh, function to initialize the uh, k means clustering um, algorithm to uh, uh, classify your data into five uh, clusters 
we have several or different algorithms to optimize or, or to identify the optimum number of clusters. This is uh, no much time to highlight these algorithms in this uh, webinar. So um, next line we have features. Features, this is the, what are the uh, features data um, to be used in the clustering. So uh, uh, feature, this is the data that have a particular property to be used in uh, in clustering. So uh, we will use the, uh, in uh, data frame uh, defined before, we will use the first two columns, which means we will cluster our data of uh, based on the first two columns, uh, permeability and velocity. This is the uh, feature data. Uh, next is to use the uh, k means dot fit. This is the uh, this is the um, uh, scikit learn function to find the uh, cluster centroid as mentioned before, and assign the data points to the nearest centroid as mentioned before in this uh, in this slide. This is a, uh, it's an uh, iterative uh, procedure um, applied by this um, uh, unsupervised machine learning uh, algorithm. So, so uh, uh, clusters, this is the key mean. Uh, next step is to predict the uh, 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 clusters of this uh, assigned feature and display the uh, uh, number of uh, clusters. So to plot these uh, clusters, uh, mostly for any plotting uh, application uh, within uh, Bison. So matplotlib uh, library will be uh, used. So we have a BLT dot figures uh, size. It's uh, 10 by 10 in width and length. And to create this uh, scatter plot, this one, uh, we will use uh, Seaborn library. Uh, uh, between x and y uh, data and uh, to have uh, to classify or to cluster the data uh, based on hue and um, the uh, color ballot this is the color ballot applied and the the transparency of the data point equal one alpha is the transparency of the uh, data uh, so um, x label y label as defined before Y axis is also logarithmic scale, title, and also grid. Um, last line number ninety two. This is to uh, uh, this uh, streamlit function to display this uh, matplotlib uh, uh, blot on the uh, web app uh, like this. This is the final uh, result of the clustering of of data based on key means uh, clustering uh, algorithm. As you can as you can see. And um, uh, last step in this um, in this um, uh, code is to generate um, the uh, histogram and a bear plots between uh, the uh, data and create, as you can see, um, um, the uh, slider to control the number of bands of this for this histogram. As you can see, this is an um, increasing number of bands between minimum value fifty to maximum uh, 5 to 50, this is the uh, number of bands for this uh, histogram. So uh, to add a, a slider uh, in the your web app, so uh, streamlit slider, uh, st.slider, this is a streamlit function to, uh, to um, add a slider line like, uh, like this and define minimum value 5, maximum is 50 and step is one. To generate a histogram, for example, for uh, for permeability, uh, so uh, um, this is the matplotlib library applied uh, uh, between the X and Y uh, labels, and the Y label is frequency, and this is the um, uh, uh, displayed the um, the uh, displayed uh, histogram. Uh, next step, I will create a bear plot like this between uh, all uh, uh, data. This is the uh, bear plot, as you can see, it's an um, uh, it's like a scatter plot uh, matrix. So 
uh, it's an uh, uh, it's an uh, scattered blot between all pairs of of data. So we have uh, bimmability uh, phi given density um, R Q I I is about quality index phi z uh, f z i and um, cluster number and and the x same uh, uh, pairs of data. Uh, the diagonal of this uh, bear plot, as you can see, representing the distribution, this is the uh, diagonal distribution of, of data, this is the distribution of the roasting, this is the distribution of grain uh, density, and so on. And also using this plot, you can discover the, uh, quickly discover the, um, the uh, data that we have a linear relationship like we have a uh, mostly linear relationship between uh, permeability against uh, RQI, for example, another linear relationship between uh, permeability and also the FZI and uh, uh, FZI and also K velocity against the permeability. As you can see, we have to plot permeability in Y in logarithmic scale. So this is the objective of the um, of the um, uh, bear plot. So to generate a plot like this, so and um, uh, we will um, use the uh, Seaborn library, this uh, bear plot equals this uh, uh, this function as uh, Seaborn library dot bear plot for the uh, data frame. This is to generate a uh, bear plot between all columns in this uh, data frame on this uh, uh, file uh, and display this plot like uh, like this. This is the uh, importance of this uh, plot. This plot is also important for uh, electrophages definition, elisophages, and also uh, discovering the uh, the linear relationship between uh, uh, all uh, bills or all combinations of all data. This is the uh, last. Uh, uh, board I will highlight in this uh, for my board to uh, um, save our time and let my uh, colleague Mohammed to start the uh, second uh, second project we have in this uh, webinar. So that's all uh, I have. Mohammed, please, um, uh, I will stop sharing. You can start with your um, board uh, right now. Okay, thank you, Engineer Sham, very much for your this. Uh comprehensive project. Uh, now I will start sharing my screen. Okay. All of you can see my screen right now? Yes, yes, go ahead, Mohammed. Okay. I will begin with my part. This is the second project in today's webinar. Uh, we will evaluate the bump and take pressure and or predict the bump and take pressure. So, let me. So what is the problem statement we have? We have we want to predict the bump and take pressure in oil wells. So why we need to do this? Because accurate prediction of bump and take pressure help us to optimize the performance and uh, the long the longer life run of the pumps. So what a challenge we have? Why we need to do this with machine learning? We have some uh, variability in sur subsurface condition. And uh, we have some complexity in, in modeling fluid dynamics. We have various models to identify the bump and take pressure. Uh, and we have a limited availability of high quality data. So, and the, the, also the high cost of the sensors. And if you have already a sensor in this well, and for somehow this sensor failed or something like this, you don't. You need to measure the bump and take pressure without pulling the completion, and cost you extra money to pull out the completion of the well and change the the sensor. So this is the challenge we have that that make make a make make a challenge for us to predict the bump and take pressure using a machine learning with accurate determination of bump and take pressure. So. What is the importance of, uh, of, of prediction the bump intake pressure? It's very important for reservoir engineers to improve the reservoir management and better understanding the reservoir performance when you know the, the accurate uh, value of the bump intake pressure. And for production engineer, of course, 
you need to enhance the performance uh, production plans and take a real time decision uh, for, for saving the pump. So if you are a product production engineer, it will operational efficiency because it will help to maintain the production rate you have and prevent overloading or underloading the pumps. And it also saves maintenance cost and extends the lifespan of the pump equipment. So in this project, you will learn how to build a machine learning model to predict the bump take pressure using regression algorithm. And you will learn also to define the input future to the model and visualize some data. And you will experiment some different model architecture like uh, linear regression. And we will get our hand uh, on a neural network, on a simple neural network. And you will evaluate the model and compare between uh, models performance. So this is our agenda for today. First of all, we will explore the data we have, and then we will define the inputs. Depend on after exploring the data, we will define some inputs that we are going to use in our in in building model. Then we will define the algorithm or the model we are going to use. Then we will train the model and explore other model algorithm, and then we will evaluate the models that we have done. So. Let's move forward. Any machine learning project workflow is uh, is 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 consists of these steps. First of all, we need to define the problem, and we have already did this. So you need to define the problem that we need to be solved through data analysis. So in our case, we need to predict the bump intake pressure. Why? We already have defined our problem. So second of all. You need, if you want to build a machine learning model, you need to have data. So you need to gather, to gather a lot of data. So data can be collected from various sources like Excel file, like from databases, from web scrapping from the internet, whatever source you have, you will gather the data and put, some, put them into a database to start building your model. After the gathering the data, you need to clean and prepare the data for further exploration. You will need to remove missing values. You will need to remove outliers or predict. If you have a missing data you want to predict, you will, you will do this and you will clean and prepare the data into a format that you are going to use to explore the data later. After this, you will explore the data to find pattern and trends in the data by using uh, some libraries like pandas and NumPy and after you explore the data and find trends and pattern, you will define the inputs that you need to build the model. After you define the inputs that you need to uh, that you need to build your machine learning model, you are going to try different model. Of course, depend on your problem type. In our case, it's regression problem, so you are going to use some regression uh, machine learning model. And if uh, and uh, as you can so as you can see in the previous example uh, that engineer Hisham uh, illustrated, you ha you have used clustering algorithm to uh, cluster uh, the permeability. And last last step that you evaluate your model. If you are using like today you are going to use linear regression and you are going to use a neural network, you you will compare between the accuracy of the, or the performance of this model by using some uh, some performance uh, like F1 score or R square or mean square error or etc. Then you can communicate the result by building dashboards or like a web application using Streamlit or you can build a, a dashboard using Power BI and share your result and finding with, with your with, with stakeholder. So, if we are going to explore the data, we have a CSV file contains some data. But this, the, the, SC, the SSV file or Excel file we have have a unique ID. This is the first column. Then the pump intake pressure that we want to estimate. And you will see here uh, uh, 2021 20, future here. Some of them are calculated variable like if you have here the oil production rate and water production rate and you will see here uh, 
production fluid. This is the summation of production oil and production water. And you will see the casing pressure, pump depth, and fluid level. And you will see here the net liquid above the pump. It's calculated. It's the difference between this column and this column. And you will have the API, gas formation volume factor, tubing inside diameter, and tubing outside diameter, and the casing inside diameter. And this is the, the density of the mixture, water and oil. And this is uh, density of oil, the specific gravity of oil. This is calculated from the API or vice versa. And the specific gravity of the water, it's all one. And uh, the areas, this is the areas calculated from the diameters here. So you will have, we have some input data gathered from the field and you will have you will see some calculated data we have calculated and added into our data set so l future we have here in the data it's type it's numerical numerical futures it's not categorical or date or time because we have uh, what is the difference between uh, date or date or time like in our last session our last webinar we handled the uh, uh, predicted the production rate with time so it's different in, in splitting the data. So in our case here, we have numerical data, not categorical. So we, we will use regression algorithms here. So af after we have explored the data, we need to check for any missing values and to check any missing values in our data. In our, this, this is a sample data set. So we don't have any missing values in this data. And the data distribution, we need to check uh, the distribution of each feature and the histogram, and we need to know the variable range. We need to know the variable range, the minimum and maximum, and the limits of each parameter. And we need to identify any outlier if exist. So you need to, to have a quick look on the data because when you're building the model, the quality of the data, the quality of your model depend on the quality of the data. So for example, you, you don't, you, you cannot have well head pressure by negative value. So you need to check the limits of, uh, of, each, of each parameter you have before continue to the next step. But it, the data we have here, it's already cleaned. It's, it doesn't have any missing data. Uh, it's, it's already prepared for, for building the model. And we have just a sample data set that consists from uh, 174 uh, rows. So after this, we need to make a data cleaning. And we will handle the missing value if exist, we don't have. L later, we need to do some future engineering. Future engineering, we need to transform the data or calculate any variable. Like in our case, we calculated the area, we calculated uh, the mixture density and find correlation between the input and the output to identify which input we are going to use to build our model. Then we need to split our data into a training and testing data set uh, into different for random or sequential if you have a date and time and we need to preserve the, the sequence of the data. But in our case, we, need, we can split our data randomly. It, it doesn't matter. So to begin our data analysis, we will type these commands using Jupyter, uh, using a notebook on uh, VS Code. And we will explain while we are doing, while we are writing the code. Okay. First of all, we will, we will use a notebook we will not uh, use a pi file a notebook it's it's preference you can you can run uh, the code line by line you you will, you don't have to uh, run the the code all at once so it's better to for you to understand each each line what what it can do so in this in this part we import the required libraries for our model that we are going to use later, we imported pandas for data for da for data frames, and we imported NIMBY for calculation and matplotlib and cpor and and plotly uh, for uh, visualization. 
and we have imported scikit-learn for model trend and test split and from scikit-learn also we import neural network and linear regression model so we will begin by uh, our data analysis this is the this is a few lines of code that i will discuss with you in the notebook first of all we need to load our csv file into a data frame so we used pandas.readcsv if you have excel file you can use read underscore excel if the extension of your file is excel file so in our case it's a csv so we used pandas.readcsv and we saved our data frame into a container called esp so we want to check that esp let me run this first line and here we it's saying you need to identify your base and in our case i will use python 3.11.5 so the first line is already run so i, I have imported all the, the required libraries so i will run this line now i have loaded my csv file into the container esp so i need to confirm that esp have already loaded the data correctly so i can use esp.head and can i and i can identify which how many number of columns i need to view here in in this case i have chosen five 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 uh, five rows and it start counting from zero so let me run if you choose six six cooler six rows it will count from zero till five and it will show for you a six rows of the data set and if you use it without any numbers it will it will uh, show you the first five rows only so if you want to know the, the names of the columns that you have in your uh, on your data set you can type esp or the container of the data frames that you have dot columns and it will write for you all the columns that you have in our in, in your data set as we have uh, visualized it in the presentation later. So later we need to check if there is any uh, missing data or null data in our data set. So we use this function. We use our containers that contain our data frame ESP and this function is null that it 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 will check if the value in this column return uh, null or not and it let me explain this in a separate line so if we use this and it return a data frame and the check at each value if it's null or not if it's null it, it is is not null false it it it, it right false and then if we use some after this it it uh, some some all the value of true values here and write you the the total number of each column so in our case we will use this so we don't have any missing data in our data set if you want to export it to uh, a csv file you can you put it into a container put this table into a container and run it and save it press a to csv file is and write the name that you want here with csv and run it and then you will have in the same folder the table that we have before it says is null and you will have the future and how many of the values are not available in our case all of them are zero because as as i have told you that uh, all the data is cleaned already okay let's continue then we want to describe our data as we said earlier we need to know the limits and uh, the mean and the standard deviation and the minimum and the maximum of each uh, variable that we have so we will use as a describe function the describe function will will give us a table for each column how many values are there so all of them are 174 
as we are, as we have said, we have one hundred seventy four rows. So the count of value in each column are the same, one hundred seventy rows, and it give you the mean and the standard deviation and the minimum and the maximum, and your data around twenty five percent and fifty percent and seventy five percent. So this is this is the describe function. It give you a statistical uh, statistical table about all your data that you have. If you want to save this table to CSV or Excel file, we will save it to a container called P. Then we will save it to an Excel file or CSV file like so. And we have run this, so we can open it and describe. Don't convert. So you will have your variable name here and the count of the data and the mean and the standard deviation and the minimum and the maximum for all your future that you have in your data set. Okay, I will not save it right now. Okay, second step, we need to find the trends in our data. So we need to use uh, pair plot. This pair plots make a scatter plot between each input and each other be, 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 between any input and the data and uh, and and the, and and the all all between all the inputs that you have in the data. So I will not run this again because it's already run. It will take some while because it's uh, it has many chart. So you will find here between like for the bump intake pressure and the bump intake pressure itself, or between the production oil and or production water or the production fluid between all the data. From this uh, chart, you can find trends between all the data, which has linear relationship like this here, between the, I cannot see very well, let me zoom. Between the casing pressure and the net liquid above the bump. So, you will find the relationship between each input and each other. That's what uh, this pair plot do. It takes all the inputs or all the columns that you have in your data set and make a scatter plot between each other in the data. Okay, so the next step we need to do is to know the distribution of our data by drawing histogram. So we can use we can draw a histogram by using Plotly library, and you will have an, an interactive plot like this one by using PX. We have imported PX before in, uh, in, in the import section, and we will use an histogram chart from what which data set that you have from the, the ESP container or the data frame that we named the ESP, and what is the X variable we, we want to... Uh, draw the histogram for the pump intake pressure for now and you later then identify the number of bins which is 10 and you can identify the the, the width and the height of the, the chart by using fig.update layout and you can identify the, the weights and the, the height how many pixels and then you use figure.show to display this figure let let us run this code and now it's run and on the x-axis we can see the pump and tick pressure and on the right axis how many values from 0 to 500 around this and from 500 to 1000 how many values that we have and we can change the number of pins of course we can increase it to 20 and we can run as you can see the number of bins increased or you can reduce it to 10 or five, whatever you want. And you can change the variable, of course. You can, if we want to draw a histogram for any variable else, we can go back and just get the column name, like production oil, for example. Let's take a copy and we can change it here x variable and we can run as, as you can see this is the histogram 
for the oil production rate. Oh, let's continue. Then we can use a correlation matrix. A correlation matrix, it's a, a, draw, a, a draw a matrix between all the data set using person correlation or whatever method you want to identify. You can use Spearman correlation or person correlation or candle correlation, whatever you specify here. We'll use this uh, correlation and between all the variables that you have in your data set that we have identified here. And this numerical only, will, we will not use any categorical data. If you have categorical data in your data set, it will give you an error. So you will have to identify this, uh, this command here or this option here that numerical only is true. And we will run this. And then to visualize the correlation matrix, we run this code. Then you will have the correlation matrix between all the variables that you have in your data file. So in, in our case, to visualize this, in, and you need to look o to all this number, it's very, uh, very time consuming and you cannot check it uh, all. So we can draw heat map for this, for this correlation by using this command. We, we can use BX or plotly to make a correlation or a heat map to the correlation matrix. And we here we identify what we are going to use on the X axis, which is uh, the correlation matrix dot column on, on the Y axis. We'll use the same names. And this is the color continuous scale. We use magma. This is the color scheme we are using. And you can update the layout here and identify the width or the height that you want. And you can hide the, the, the legend or display the legend from here. Then you will type fig.show to display the chart and we will run it. And then you have this correlation matrix here. That is the table and they have number. And we have put it here into a heat map. So you will find which of the data is highly correlated with each other. If this is not clear yet, we can use another way to identify pattern in our data. We can sort this correlation matrix, but with the reference to the output that we want. And we want only the high values, positive or negative, with, uh, highly correlated in positive or negative with the output that we want, which in our case, the bump intake pressure. So the correlation values that that is related to the bump intake pressure, we will sort it in ascending order and we will put it on in a data frame let me let me show for you this line only to understand this so let's display the correlation values as we can see this is the correlation value it returns a column with each input and its correlation with the output which is the pump intake pressure and of course, in, in case of the specific gravity of water, because it's all one and the casing inside diameter is all the same. So it is not available. It's a correlation. It's not available. So then we need to draw a chart, a bar chart with this call, with this uh, table to identify which inputs that we are going to use. So we use this code to draw this chart. Let's run it. After this, you will have this chart let me, go, let me go back to the presentation so in our case we are going to use the the inputs that have a correlation with the output that more than 2, 2, uh, 0.25 uh, that has correlation coefficient more than 0.25 so in our cases we are going to use the mixture density and the wellhead pressure the production fluid so why we didn't use the net liquid above the bomb or the production water? Because it is going to be a duplicate for the input because it's the, already the production fluid has high correlation. This is the production fluid has high correlation with the output. So if we included the water production and oil production, it is less than the, the production fluid uh, or the total production fluid. So we are going to use the production fluid as an input. 
and the mixture density has also higher correlation and will hit pressure and the casing pressure has a high correlation with a positive value and if we are going to to see the negative values you will see the fluid level has the highest correlation with uh, has the highest correlation effect with the pump intake pressure we can see also this is one is high it's a production gas we can include it also in uh, with us in uh, in the input the the correlation gas the production gas because it's not included in the production fluid and the rest of them api production oil it's all less than 0.2 and we have already included the production flow so we have included one two calculated variables which is the production fluid and the mixture density and the fluid level uh, depth we didn't we can use the fluid level depth or we can use the net liquid above the bump one of this maybe we can use the net liquid above the bump because it's it's higher than the the fluid level depth okay let's continue let's go back to vs code and continue we can save the correlation coefficient to csv file also as well by adding it to a container then to csv file and name the file that you want and we can save it to the, uh, the csv file after this we will need to select the x and the y or the input or the, the input that we want to use and the output that we are going to estimate in our case we are going to use the production fluid and the production gas and the wellhead pressure and the casing pressure and the mixture density and the net liquid above the pump and the the target is the pump intake pressure let's run this and we can save the x and the y to csv files let's let's see it this is the x it has already put the only the input that we want into a csv file which contains the production fluid the production gas will have pressure kissing pressure and mixture density and the net liquid above the bump and the y it is only the pump intake pressure corresponding to each of the inputs that we have selected let's go back now we need to split our data into four four parts the exit train and the y train that we are going to train our model with and the x test and y test x test that we are going to test our model with and y test we are going to validate or the, or evaluate our model against the prediction that comes from using x test we are going to use train test split function that comes with uh, for, uh, with scikit lab and we, we are going to use x data set that we have here and we have identified our inputs and we are going to use a y data set as a target and the test size is 40 percent and the random state is 101 this is uh, because if you want to if if uh, we will take uh, the split randomly and we specify the seed number so that each time you split the data it is it is the same not uh, not each time different to be able to work on the same data set uh, not each one is random so we will run this and we can save the data set to csv files like so let's go let's count which how many values in exit train and how many values in y train we can use print function and you can use exit train dot count to know where, how many number of rows in uh, in x train data set and how many numbers of rows in x test data set let's run this and as you can see the production fluid has 104 and production gas 104 also all of them has 104 and four in the training data set and in the testing data set it has all, all also the same number which is 70 70 points so we need to verify or validate the counting in uh, in y also let's check the same y train is 104 and in y test 70. now 
we are going to build uh, our linear regression model. So we have imported the libraries already in the first section. So we will use a container called linear regression model. We will use LM for uh, as a short, and it will equal the linear regression model. This is, we put the linear regression model into a, a container called LM. So later we need to train the model. So we will train the model with the X train and Y train data that we have split here. So with 104 data set of X train and 104 of Y train, we will train the model of this data. We will, we will give the model the X train and Y train and the model will have the input and have the output and will fit the model to this data. So let me explain for you how the linear regression model works very simple. The linear regression model is considered a simple neural network or a multi or a one layer uh, neural network or a perceptron uh, neural network. How is this? Because it consists of many inputs. In our case, we have five inputs, uh, five inputs, for example, X1, X2, X3, uh, the production fluid and uh, the mixture density and the gas uh, production. So all of these are the input layer. And we have output layer, which is one output, which is the pump intake pressure. In our case, the Y estimated, the pump intake pressure estimated equal the weight multiplied by xi or x1 so each each line of this must have weight and will be multiplied by x1 so x1 multiplied by its weight plus x2 multiplied by its weight plus x3 multiplied by its weight etc 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 till we reach our xd plus the p or the bias or the intersect uh, the intersect in in the y axis give us the equation of a straight line so the neural network is a sim uh, the linear regression is a simple representation of uh, a simple neural network without any hidden layer we will know later what is the hidden layer in uh, in the next few slides so the the linear uh, linear regression model is consist of equation y equal ax plus or wx plus c while w or, or or a is the slope and b is the intersection with the y-axis so we give the model the x data set but, but but in this in on the right hand side this is a single linear regression in the on the right on the left hand side this is a multiple linear regression so we give the model our x or our uh, x train data set and we give the model the prediction or, or the y and the model trained uh, itself to get the weights so this is what fit function do so fit function trained the model with x train and y train to get to get uh, the weights of the model and the b so let's run it okay we give an error because we didn't run this line before we need to run this line first, then we run this. Now, the model now is fitted between X train and Y train and it's ready to use. So we will predict, we will use the model to predict with X test and we'll save the prediction into prediction linear model one. And then we will compare this prediction between the actual data that we have, which is the Y test. We run this then the model saved the result into prediction we can visualize it by using like this one and you will have a data frame of the predicted predicted bump intake pressure using x test you can give the model any values here you can use linear regression model and you can give him any one two three four five six values like so instead one two three four five we need to put them into a 
list. To the so, if you use any input, any series of input, like but but you can use uh, an accurate number, and I use I use some random number of six input. In this case, this is six input, and it will it will yield an uh, an output bump and take pressure. Which in this value one output and this value is very high because I'm using just random number to to tell you that we can use the model on any data set, not, not just an, an X test. So we will use the, the predicted uh, linear regression model results that we have already saved before. Yeah. And we want to uh, arrange this table to compare between the error. We can use this and calculate the error ourselves if you want to calculate the error that this is a mean absolute error and we can use this function instead matrices and mean absolute error between the y test and y predict or we can build the table ourselves like here we build the table ourselves of the y actual that we have it's why it's why he test and this is the y values that come from linear model and this is the error between this value and this value and then we put all, all of them into a table so we can build the table ourselves and uh, get the result get the error or you can use this code and get the error mean absolute error or mean square error or r score between the tests and the prediction line in just one line of code instead of building the table. And you can save the table to CSV file. And this is a summary of, uh, we can use describe on the error table that we have to know the average and the standard deviation and the maximum and minimum error that we have in our data set. But this, uh, this line of code doesn't give you the maximum and the minimum or, uh, or the average, uh, of the average error, it gives the average of all the data. It doesn't give uh, the maximum or the minimum or the tensile uh, values. So if you want to get this, you need to build the, the error function table by yourself. So another, another method to uh, verify the data that we have, we, we can use 40% uh, plot or a plot between the predicted value and the actual value that we have. We will use a scatter plot using the results table between the predicted, the actual value and the predicted value from the linear model. And we will make a trend line between them. And we will identify the width and the height of the chart. And we will fig show and we run it. And this is the final results. We can see that uh, the data is quite, it uh, fits the data. So the model is performing very nice. And we can calculate the R score between the Y test and Y prediction for the fitted line by running this. We have an um, R score by 67.76 which is relatively good for this uh, amount of data. We don't have a huge data set, it's just a simple data set from 174 points only. So this uh, value is, is very nice fit in this bit. We can visualize the coefficient that we have uh, set earlier. This is the weight that we have into our equation. So we, can, we can tell the model to tell us what weight he has calculated by writing this line of code linear model dot coefficient underscore and will give us the coefficient of each of input variables that we have we have how many input five in, uh, six inputs and we will have one two three four five six weights and we can get the intercept or the p or the bias or the the, the intersect was y axis by using linear model dot intercept underscore and it will result 
with the intersection with the y axis. Okay, now we are going to see what is the difference between uh, the linear regression model and the artificial neural network model. Let's first of all, let's let's simplify. Uh, let's uh, describe how the neural network model work in in, in a quick. Uh, the neural network model it, it consists of input layer and output layer and between them are hidden layers. There you can identify any numbers of hidden layers that you want, but uh, when the hidden layers increase, the model compatibility increases also. And this is the symbol uh, neural network uh, artificial neural network form. It's called perceptron. It is called. It is a sim very similar to uh, linear regression, except we have activation function. The activation function, after you do the summation of x, the, the first input, and multiply it by its weight, and you sum all of it, you apply activation function for the node, and then you predict the y or the predicted value. So you do the same. But on, e on each hidden layer, you do the same what you do in, on the single layer perceptron, and you do the same in, in multiple layer uh, neural network. So let's see it here in the code. You can identify the number of hidden layers that you want. We In our case, we will try one, one, uh, 10 and then 100 and 200. This is the number of uh, hidden layer sizes and the activation function. You can use uh, logistic, tan, and relo. We will explain this later because uh, we have already running out of time. And you can identify the solver and the learning rate and the alpha and maximum iterations that you want. Then you will put all this in a, into a parameter grid so the model can test all this data together and tell you what is the best parameter that you need to uh, that you need to consider when you are building the model or which parameter achieves the least error okay so we have the parameter grid here we will identify each variable in the parameter grid we with each uh, with each variable we have identified area <laughs> then we will use the same method that we have used earlier when we used the linear regression model we will put the multiple linear regressor into uh, a container called ANN and we will use the grid and search and we will pass the parameter grid that we have identified earlier here and we here identify how many verbs and how many parallel jobs will run together let's run it and then after we run it we need to fit our model with X train and Y train into an artificial neural network and in this time, it will use all of the, all of the possible combination together with this with this parameter grid that we have defined. So it will take some while to run it. It's fitting two folds for each seven uh, seven hundred twenty candidates, and total it will do one one thousand four hundred forty fits with this parameter grid. So it will take somewhat while it runs after it it fits the model and identifies the error of each run it will identify the we can use ann dot under uh, dot best parameter underscore to find which is the parameter is is the best or achieved the lowest error in in our data set in our case the best uh, parameter was uh, when the activation function was relo and the alpha when it was 0. 0.0001 and the hidden layer when it was 1000 and the learning rate adaptive and the maximum iteration was 400 and the, uh, the solver was was LPFGS. Here the model was run and we can check on this and the parameter changes and we can uh, use predict, uh, predict with X test the same the same the same what is the same like we have done in the linear regression model and we can build our table and we can visualize our chart here and we can use our our evaluation matrix 
and here we can see the R score is 0.75, which is very close to the linear regression model. We don't have a difference here because the data set we have, it's not big. So the linear regression model and the artificial neural network already perform it the same, while the artificial neural network is very complex than the, the linear regression model. And both perform it the same. We can compare between the results here by drawing a chart between the two. This is uh, the, the artificial neural network, the predicted value but, uh, versus uh, the actual value of the artificial neural network. And this is in the linear regression model. And we can see both of them perform it almost the same. Uh, so in our case, but in, 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 in a huge data set, artificial neural network will perform very better than the linear regression model. So that's all for now. If any one of you have any question, you, I will have.